break ball. That's nice when they come out with stuff. Old iron rag ball. I first met George Norris in Hull in 1983. He was 19 years old and following in his father's footsteps. Old iron rag ball. Nearly 40 years later, Jules told me that he'd returned to the streets to collect scrap with his father. What was different this time was that George's horse and cart had been changed for a diesel pickup truck and most of the Victorian streets that had once housed Hull's proud fishing community had been demolished and replaced with modern housing estates. I asked them what differences in the industry struck them the most and why they think the Norris family cry of ragbone will fall silent in Hull. I've been doing the, the work, like chatting as we call it, collecting scrap, but anything that I earn money, 68 year. Then when I was six, got to 16, I, I managed to rake up enough to buy a, a pony and cart. And I started from then, like scrap iron, newspaper, anything, you know. Started doing scrap when I was about 18. And I finished probably when I was 22, 23. I got into it because there weren't a lot of employment in Hull, so I didn't go to college or anything. So it was out of just trying to earn money, really. I retired from the rigs last year, and uh, my dad asked me to jump out with him for a couple of days, and it's turned into weeks. But it's been all right, so I'm revisiting it when my dad's seen it through his eyes because I've been away from that industry for that long. And it's been an eye opener, really, to see the changing face of the city, really. My thing's photography now, that's my passion. So I take my camera to work with me and I'm documenting the people who are giving my dad things. And I'm also getting to see the people that my dad's met in his life on a day to day basis. And everybody in the city knows my dad. Right, but... Old iron, old bikes, old scrap, car battery, rock bar, rock bar. When my dad goes, that will be the last of the original scrap dealers in Hull, that last of that generation. Right. There, were, there were six brothers of us, I'm the last one. So yeah, my dad will definitely be the last I'm the last the one of the Norris family, you know, the scrap dealers in Hull. Rabbit! 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 In 1983, when I went out, a lot of people didn't have washing machines they had what you call a, a copper tank to boil their clothes in and there was a thing called a twin tub a hover twin tub so that allowed you to wash your clothes and spin your clothes tumble dryers was a bit of a luxury so that was a big thing that i used to get then now a lot of the things that we get are washing machines that haven't lasted five years we get a lot of microwave ovens baby gates, disability equipment, chairs, mobility scooters, clothes, airers, things of that nature, white goods, a lot of white goods, which haven't really last for long. Red bone, scrap iron red bone, old iron red bone, Rap rig boom. That dog. Red boom. At the beginning of the 80s, when I first started going out on the horse and carts, it was sort of the beginning of Maggie Thatcher's power, and there was a lot of unemployment in Hull. The landscape was pretty, let's say, there was a lot of demolition going on. There was a lot of housing stock being demolished and 
a lot of the people have been rehoused in the new estates that have been getting built. There was a lot of poverty. June's shops, shops disappeared because of the price of the rents of shops. In the 80s, there was boarded up shops, but if the people rented them for fair rents, there was a lot more of them, but now they've, they've vanished. There's very few second-hand shops in Hull now. They've disappeared for... It's the same as the clothes, isn't it? Rags, what charities get. They don't want rags. They haven't, want, they haven't wanted them for years, rags. Mm -hmm. I think the charity shops get most of the clothing now, so that goes to all of the wealth for people who need it. Russia uh, don't want brown furniture. You now in them days, you could sell any, any type of furniture. Yeah, you? furniture... Like my dad just said. No, brown furniture, even though it's really good in good nick and one another, you can't sell it. But the people who don't want it passing on to them. They don't want brown furniture because it's, it's old fashioned. They want something modern, don't they? It's old fashioned, isn't it? Yeah. Red bone! Red bone! Red bone! Red bone! When we arrive at the scrapyard, my dad wears his lorry with all the items on the lorry it comes off the weigh scales then we select which things are taken off the wagon so usually we take off what we call non-ferrous which is copper brass lead aluminum batteries copper wire copper taps things stainless steel sinks so that goes to one separate place to be weighed and the mass of the other scrap goes to a giant scrap heap. Once that's offloaded, I then go about stripping the copper down to its base element, i.e. if there's pieces of brass on the copper, I'll chop it off because it gives us a better price. It's weighed separately. Car batteries are weighed separately. Stainless steel, aluminum, so this is how it's weird. There's a lot of people unemployed still in Hull, as there was in 1983. I see a lot of affluence. It's not all negative, but I'm not sure that affluence is built on debt. I don't really know. But I think a lot of people are in more debt than they were back in the day because housing stock was cheap. People could afford to get on the social ladder, now it's more difficult. A lot of people get access to credit now. Back then it was probably more difficult to get credit. The poverty, what I see around me now, it's in the fabric of the buildings, the new developments what I've just mentioned unkept gardens, litter, these are just sounds of people's neglect of their environments. I feel like in 1983, even though people didn't have much money, they took more care of their environment and their neighbourhood and was proud of where they lived. I've always found the working people of Hull generous. If they've got it, they'll give you it. You're doing them a service at the end of the day. They're glad to get rid of it. They can't afford to get to take it to the tip and this and the other. It's physically hard work, and you've got to really, really look for this stuff. You know what I mean? Because, like my dad said earlier, the competition now, because everybody's poor, looking for this stuff, it's just getting harder and harder to find it. The younger generation don't want it. They can get a good paid job, which <laughs> that's a joke in itself. But if they can get a good paid job in Hull. They'd rather do that because they know exactly what they're going to get every week. Whereas my dad, all his life, he's never known from week to week how much he's going to earn. It's all on what effort he puts in at the end of the day, isn't it? But we get by and we've lived. And we, we've never gone hungry, have we? We know then. It's just my bloody feet that's keeping me out, out of work, isn't it, really? Yeah. Well, we'll get you I've got my walking stick now though, so I'm alright. Yeah, and get you an exercise bike. Yeah. That'll keep you rock and rolling, won't it? Definitely. Yeah. You do miss your horses though, don't you? I don't miss them. My, my Rosie and Tommy, the hell? 
luckily they've got a good old where they are. So after my dad goes, that is definitely the end of my family's history with the scrap business. There's other families in the city that will be doing it and the city is now full of different nationalities who are looking to farm money to make a living. So there's a lot more people jumping on the bandwagon of recycling. Uh, but my dad is 81 now and when he goes, that generation, that'll be the end of the land, that'll be it, because I won't be doing it. Scrap report.